What's up, everybody? And welcome back to the Verzi Effect podcast show. My name is Paul Verzi. You guys are listening to episode 616. Uh, and guys, I am i don't know what to tell you. I'm flying solo again. You know, I'm just going to start calling the uh, May solo month. Uh, you guys seem to be liking them. I got to be honest with you. The solo numbers are going up. And uh, audio numbers are always pretty decent on the show because the show is audio for so long. But I got to be honest with you, I'm having fun doing the solos. And I just got so much shit going on <clears throat> dealing with, you know, taking care of stuff at the house, making sure my wife is OK, dealing with my back injury, which we just got the MRI. We know what we're dealing with now and all that stuff. So just not going into the studio in May. So I'm flying solo again here on um, episode 616. Uh, glad you guys have been enjoying these, man. I enjoy doing them. You get to listen to your boy rant about shit that he knows about and might not know about. Uh, but either way, we have a good time. And the reason why it exists is because of you fine people tuning in and subscribing. And please continue to do so and continue to spread the word to people about the Verzi effect. Yes, I know I do Bone to Pick with Bobby Kelly. Yes, I got comedy clips all over the place. Yes, I got a special on Netflix. All those things I know. But the Verzi effect is alive and well. We're going to grow this. We're going to keep growing this thing. This is my solo shit to express myself, talk to interesting, funny, great people, uh, so please hit the subscribe button to my YouTube channel. It's just a Paul Verza YouTube channel. Just hit the subscribe button, guys. It helps the show. Leave comments, rate and review the Verzi Effect, and get the Verzi Effect everywhere you get your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, and all that good stuff, okay? Um, that's pretty much it. I want to, at the top of the show, I want to uh, thank people who are buying tickets to Milwaukee. We added Milwaukee last minute. Milwaukee is coming June 14th, two weeks, guys. A little over two weeks, maybe three weeks or whatever. Um, I will be in, um, yeah, June 14th and 15th. I will be at the Improv in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, not this Saturday, guys, but next Saturday, June the 8th, Gramercy Theater. The room is filling up and uh, want to sell that puppy out or get damn near close to it. But let's sell it out. So uh, if you're in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area, June 8th, the Gramercy Theater, New York City, right off the West Side Highway. All right. Check that out. Um, all right. I, uh, I'm back. I had to take that call, but, uh, anyway, like I was saying, uh, what was I saying? What was I saying? Yes. Get tickets, tickets, paulverzi.com tickets to my shows, Gramercy theater, June 8th. Then we're going to Milwaukee and we're going to Seattle. Then we're going to Portland Then we're going to Tampa. Then we're going to Rhode Island. Then we're going to, I think we got, what did we get? I think we got South Jersey coming up in November. We're just adding dates. PaulVerzi.com. You know, the kid is working. The kid's always working. Um, and I am flying solo again. Like I said, uh, the Verzi effect listeners, you people listening, you people are the fucking best. Last week, we talked about Leonardo being the number one turtle. I actually got a lot less uh, pushback on that than I thought. I thought you guys were going to be all over me. And a lot of people were agreeing that Leonardo uh, was the one and they liked my argument. Um, I still get a lot of pushback with the Jordan ones. That's fine. But uh, it is what it is. We're talking, you know, we're talking about things that uh, that are just fun to talk about. Anybody taking shit like that seriously? There's enough shit going on in this world that if you're listening to me talking shit about something and you're going like, what the fuck is he talking about Jordan 1s or Leonardo being the best turtle? If, if, th if those things are triggering you and setting you off, then then you're a little fucked up. Um, because let's be honest, guys, things are happening. And I think you guys can agree with this. Okay. Things are happening in the world that I don't think. To, is it too bright? Let me see. if Is it too bright or is it? Are we good? Should I get another tone? Maybe that tone? Yeah, maybe that tone. Yeah, that looks a little better. I can't tell. 
Yes, no, maybe. All right. Um. So things are happening now. It's too bright. I'm sorry. And now it's blurry. I mean, I'm a mess right now. I got no producer. That's the problem about me doing it myself. And okay. So things are happening now that I never thought would happen. People are getting exposed. Weird things are happening. And I know we've talked about it before when I said things are not what they seem. But like this P. Diddy thing, shit is getting even crazier now with stories. Uh, people are confirming stories. Now, this Robert De Niro thing. I want to talk about this Robert De Niro thing too. Okay. And again, you guys know that I'm not going to sit here and talk about my political views who I'm voting for and doing all that shit. I'm not, I, I would never alienate half the people listening to me. I would never try to say half the people are right, half the people are wrong. If you've listened to this show long enough, you know that I do it from a logical, you know, outside looking in, try to just be as down to earth and logical as possible and try to listen to everybody's points as long as they're not fucking mentally ill, which in today's world, who fucking knows now? You know, who knows in today's world if people are mentally ill? Because I got to tell you something. A lot of things get said and you're just like, what's going on? What's going on? So when I talk about this Robert De Niro thing, I want to do it without any political views or sides. Okay. I want to do this from almost just like a, a human instinct standpoint. Okay. So, you know, take this how you want to take this. First of all, Robert De Niro has been in two of my favorite movies ever. Uh, you know, it's undeniable to say that the guy, you know, to talk about the guy's acting. Now people are like, fuck that, you're washed up, you suck as an actor. No, he doesn't. He does not suck as an actor. You want to say he made some shitty movies as he got older and turned into an old man? Fine. But I mean, he was incredible in The Godfather. He's incredible in Goodfellas. He's using... He, you know, he's, he's, he's a Robert De Niro is, is one of the finest actors that we've watched. I'm going to put that aside here. Okay. I'm going to put political views aside here. What I wanted to talk about was I'm finding it strange that, you know, Robert De Niro keeps like showing up to these things and like yelling about Trump and saying, if he gets in, he's never going to leave. If he gets in, he's going to come after me. It just feels like something is off with this, right? Like anybody that is that into stopping somebody or, or seems weird to me. Um, whether it's something that they're trying to, I don't know, hide or, or if it's not hide, uh, like a personal event that I don't know, but all I know is that Robert De Niro showing up to all these places and talking and speaking out. It, like, it's one thing if you don't like somebody politically, fine. It's one thing if you even want to be outspoken that you don't like somebody. But to start saying things like, if he gets in office, he'll never leave, like Hitler, uh, that to me seems like, that like, because he already left the first time. Like, I don't, I don't understand that. So there's like, it's just a weird thing to me. To have somebody that's so like, if he gets in office, he's never going to leave. We can't have that like a Mussolini or a or a Hitler. And I'm going like, am I, I'm, I'm missing something? I'm missing something. So the whole Robert De Niro thing seems very strange to me. Okay. And for years, you hear these things. We talked about it on the last episode. And I said, where there's smoke, there's a little fire. But now there's like a lot of fire. And a lot of things that people said and people are like, oh, that person's crazy. And, uh, you know, another thing that we spoke about on this show, and I know that I've spoken about it. Anytime you just dismiss somebody as crazy to kind of void their point and make it go, nah, that's just crazy. They're crazy. That's not cool because what if they're not crazy and it's real? You know? A perfect example was, and if you listen to my Joe Rogan episode where I'm talking about in 1973 
what my father saw. My father used to think, I mean, my father's an Italian from the Bronx. He thought that these people that saw UFOs and aliens were these crazy, dumb hillbillies trying to get attention, trying to get on TV. They're all fucking, man, I seen the spaceship, man. It was, you know, he thought that it was all that. And then in 1973, over the Bronx, my father, my aunt, and a bunch of people in the Bronx in New York City saw one in 1973. Because 1973, they were actually all over the country, Mississippi, all that. In fact, there's like a 1973 file on UFOs that they had a file of President uh, Carter. President Jimmy Carter, 1973, had like a file on all of the sightings of the UFOs around the country. And my father saw one. But it's easy to say, oh, those people are crazy. And then they get put in the crazy category. But guess what? They did see a UFO. They did like... And here's another thing. I don't think, and I'm just, I'm just, I know that like I uh talking about aliens is off what I was talking about before, but I don't think somebody's going to say, I just don't, unless they're on LSD or drugs, but I don't think somebody's gonna say, Yeah, something was hovering over my backyard, a bright light came down, I saw people get sucked up, and then the thing turned into a dot in the sky. I don't think that that's going to happen thousands and thousands of times, the same story from people and have it be a lie. But it's easy to go, that person's crazy. Then when somebody says, oh, I heard that celebrity or those people go to an island and on that island, there are young girls doing shit like that Epstein Island. And people are like, nah, but they would never do that. And no, nah, I'm sure they have just, well, look, all those, all, all those great actors went that's fine or whatever it is and people just like and then all of a sudden time goes by and you find shit out now i don't know but i feel like now puzzle pieces are coming together and i think with the internet and technology i and and people i think what happened now is people realize that you don't have to, things aren't going to be hidden anymore so they just want to say their truth. That's what I think. You know, you got guys. You got people that were, you know, criminals in jail and now they're doing podcasts. Literally gang members doing podcasts, talking about the shit they did out in the open now. So I think everything is coming out and it's really fuck. It's really cleaning a lot of closets from people. And it's wild times. We are living in wild, wild times. And uh, yeah, I just want to tell jokes, make people laugh, make people happier in life. And uh, it is nuts. Think about this. We got a, 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 a president of the United States on trial for giving hush money to a hooker. We got the biggest actors in the world, you know, that have to defend themselves by going to some guy's island. We got fucking rappers that people made these crazy claims that they were doing wild things at their parties. And now it's all coming out that, that in fact, a lot of that stuff happened. Um, so I don't like, th this is the hard thing about this. Now it's like the way people go, I don't know what to believe. I don't know. Now I believe a lot of, like, I believe a lot of crazy shit now. If they were like, yo, the movie ET, that was a real alien. And the government and the government actually just used the real alien in the movie to kind of let people know, hey, this is what they look like. So in 30, 40 years, when the aliens start coming here, they're going to kind of have an idea and feel a little better because of E.T. I mean, 70 percent of me would be like, no, that's definitely not true. But then 30 percent would say, yo, dude, I think E.T. might have been like the, a real actor. <laughs> I mean, my conspiracy theories now are just going through the roof because everything I hear, I believe. That's the only problem. Like, I got to really reel this in because now I hear anything and I'm like, what did you hear? And then people are like, yeah, Paul, that's just clearly not true. And now it's even worse because with AI, AI is making voices exact of the person and talking in these fake interviews. So you think the person said it when they didn't say it. I mean, I, uh, you know, uh, is sports fixed? They're saying sports is fit. I mean, like all of these things and where you used to say, no, come on. 
What's the word? That's crazy. That's the name of this episode, by the way. That's crazy. Come on. No way. That's crazy. And then you find out. And I'm telling you right now, in 20, 30, maybe 40 years, you're going to find out the truth about COVID. You're going to find out the truth about, about presidents. You'll find out the truth about Trump. You'll find out the truth about Biden. You'll find out the truth. What happens is when enough time goes by and when the people that were involved in the in the heart of that era, in the in the middle of it, in the prime of that era, once they're in their 90s or dying off and the new generation comes up, that's when you'll get information. That's when you'll get information. That's what I think. You know, they, they just wait. We're never going to know. I mean, we know what happened with COVID for the most part, but we're going to really know, like really understand a thousand percent. Oh, this, that, there's no gray. It's black and white. This is what happened. But that's not going to be for, for decades. And that's the problem. You know, um, that's just how it's always been, though, right? It's always been like that. Uh, they're still not definitive. I mean, people know what happened to John F. Kennedy, rest his soul. You know, people know now that pretty much the story's out. But like even still all these years later, people still like have questions and still argue it, which is wild to me. It's wild. Um, so the point of this story is get your family, get a cabin up in the mountains, be off the grid, go fishing for your dinner, have no cell phones, have no way that they could trace you and just go live off your life in the great outdoors, enjoy your family. And that's it. <laughs> As I was saying that part of me felt real comfort. I was like, man, that would be, that's it, man. Love your family. Be with your family. That's all that matters. All this other shit don't matter. All this other shit is for money. Nothing. It, it don't matter. I was listening to um, Gary V talk. You guys know Gary V. Gary V is the guy that like, you know, motivational speaker, wine guy, rich guy, whatever you want to call him. But he was saying that he thinks the next wave is just live streaming everything. Like everything anybody does is just a live stream. So like every single time you go and you do something in your job, you're just live streaming it. And he's like, that's going to be the next wave of people that are famous. Because let's be honest, the bar is low. The bar is low. Look who gets famous now. The bar is, I mean, what is it? It's a bunch of people that like, you know, either go on TikTok, do something, do a silly thing, go on, you know, make a YouTube channel, make up game shows. God bless them. I'm not hating. You know, I'm not hating, but that's what it's become. I mean, I could literally start a channel where I'm just a baker at night. Paul Verzi, the comedian, does a baking show from midnight to one in the morning. One day he's doing bread. The next day he's doing cupcakes. The next day he's doing cookies. The next day he's doing pound cake. And like that shit could just blow up and I could be the baking fucking comedian and get, you know, and I'm not, I'm not. I'm not hating on that, but that sounds exhausting. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. I'm in a mood, guys. No, I am not um, on anything. I have haven't been drinking. Haven't been doing anything. Um, back is killing me. Got the MRI back. My MRI results were a herniated disc in my lower back. Very bad. Hitting the nerve, shooting down my leg. And it sucks. I'm not going to lie. Some days it sucks. We went out to dinner yesterday for my son's birthday. And I'm sitting there and I'm just in pain. I'm just in pain, man. Back pain sucks. My wife's getting better, thank God. So things are, you know, things are good. Feel blessed. Feel blessed. Feel grateful. But, um, you know, as you get older, I think I almost tore my rotator cuff just rolling over in my sleep. I'm at that age. Once you hit your 40s, dude, it's a, I'm not joking. I don't mean to sound like an old man, but once you hit your 40s and you like roll over or like put your sock on a certain way, like I almost pulled my hamstring, put my sock on. And I'm in pretty, I mean, I'm in pretty good shape. Um, But anyway. Yeah, so I, 
I'm looking forward to seeing what's next in the world because I think that we haven't seen anything yet. I think that this is the tip of the iceberg. You got people saying some wild stuff. I mean, it is, it's wild out there, man. Shootouts. Why do I hear somebody outside? Um, yeah. People robbing people, shootouts. I'm just going like, what's, what happened? Like, what's going on? I, this sounds like some old man shit, but like, when I see like an ep, this is going to probably be the oldest man shit I've ever seen. But like when I see episodes of old sitcoms or like even like, like the honeymooners, when you just come home from work and you sit down and you talk to your wife and you have dinner and you talk about your day and then you watch TV, you get ready for bed and go to bed and everything like I, that. That's like nice. Now it's just like, you know, I don't know. Earthquakes in New York. I mean, something is going on, everybody. Something's going on. Now I saw, saw, here's another thing I saw. To add, let's add crazier shit to this, this, this big pot. Now they're saying that professors have proven, a couple of professors have proven that we are in fact in a simulation, that we are in the matrix, that we're in some sort of, you know, that people, like, not everybody you see is like a real person. Like, it's a simulation or something. That's why you'll see, see people clap the exact same way. Or when you watch a sport, teams do, like, a few guys, you'll see Glitch doing the exact same thing like a video game. And I'm just going like, dude, I don't know anymore. I don't know. You know what I do? I I, I pray to God. And uh, <laughs> at this point, I hope for the best. I had another, I heard, I saw another guy. Let's throw another thing in this. I heard another guy going, yeah, well, you know, if things don't work out in this election, it's just going to be a civil war. It's just going to be a civil war. And that's what needs to happen. Now, normally you would say that guy's mentally ill. That guy needs help. Um, there's no way that's going to happen. And now I'm just like, should I get another gun? Should I get, should I, right? I'm literally watching craziness in the world and I'm going, I don't know if I got enough ammunition. I'm going to, but I'm going to get it. <laughs> I got to protect, I got to protect mine. I got to protect my, my family. That's what I'm thinking about doing. Just getting an arsenal and like, just like four more dogs that are all German shepherds. Just a German shepherd's patrol in the house and a bunch of ammo to just give our, that's what you just got to give yourself a shot. You know, you just got to give yourself a shot. Just ammo dogs. Cause I folks, I don't know what's going to happen, but I can tell you one thing. And, and I do think that as a comedian that travels everywhere, I do think that I see more than the average person. I think it's fair to say, I mean, the fact that I'm on 50, 60 flights a year, um, um, I'm meeting people. And for the most part, man, people that come out, they're great. And I also will say this. There's a lot of great people in this country. There's a lot of great people in the world. And I would say the majority of people that you actually can sit down and have a normal conversation with, even if you disagree with their point of view, like people are good for the most part, you know, because I think normal people just want a nice result in the end for everybody normal people but it's the people that are not and i do believe that there are people that are if you want to call them evil bad i believe that they exist and, and then there's a mental illness thrown in there but as somebody that travels more sees more goes around more sees cities sees what's going on i can honestly say like wow things have Things are different in certain places. You know, I remember being in certain cities for comedy festivals and being like, this is amazing and the streets are great and clean. And you go back to that city now and you're like, I got to get back to my hotel room because it's straight up dangerous here. You know, there's shootouts and there's this and that. And you see homeless people nodding out on heroin next to their pit bull just sitting on the street. And you're like, what the, what's going on here? So anyway, this is a comedy podcast. Let's get, let's get. Let's get more positive. 
hopefully things work out. There's not a civil war. You know, Robert De Niro can go home, take some Xanax and stop this madness. I don't know what's going to happen with P. Diddy. That's a whole wild thing. But hopefully things work out, everybody. That's that's what we ultimately want. And look, take peace in this. All the things going on in the world. Take peace and solace in one thing. You always have the Verzi Effect podcast to listen to. The Voice of Reason. You could go watch some of my stand-up. You could watch my special and go, all right, you know what? Things might be crazy, but our boys got us. Our boys got us with the pods and the comedy. Um, I'm kidding. I know that that sounds completely, what's it called? It's the word I'm looking for. Um, not, yeah, narcissistic, I guess, or I'm joking. But, I mean, listen, it's a good podcast if you're a reasonable person. And I think everybody, I'll give you guys a little little nugget. I think I'm going to name my new special. Are you ready? I'm 98% sure I am going to name my new special, which will be out somewhere this year. Whether I put it out myself on YouTube, whether I put it on a platform, all of that is going to depend on timing you know, and, and how I want to do things. But I think the new name, uh, the name of my new podcast is going to be Reasonable Man. I think that that's what it's going to be. Reasonable Man. You guys are the first people I'm telling that to. The special is being worked on now. I did some edits on it. I looked at it this week. I would say uh, it's coming along great. Also, it's probably the cleanest hour I've done as far as like language. Not that, not that, I mean, I'm definitely not filthy, but this one is polished. This one uh, flows really nice. The director said something that also somebody in the audience said, which made me feel good. And I can never say this because I just don't know what the reaction will be. But somebody said it feels perfect and it flows nearly perfect. So I'm hopefully that that's hopefully knock on wood that that's what um, you guys see. But I think the name of the special is going to be Reasonable Man. And um, and I'm excited. I'm excited. There's some some good stories in there, some funny jokes. And now it's just on to the next. Now I'm just working on on new stuff. So, um, you know, there you go. But before I get out of here, I want to talk about um, the trans community, abortion, and this election. So let's get into it. I think that <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you guys are listening on audio, you're like, oh, shit, this is no. This is just wild, man. I'm just I will say this, though. This is the last thing I'll say about this. This November is going to be wild. I mean, they got a candidate, the Republican candidate is on trial and has all these charges against him, and he's leading the polls by a lot. The 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 Democratic candidate, uh, I don't think knows he's the Democratic candidate. <laughs> I mean, someone's gonna win, someone's gonna lose, and the other side is going to go ape shit. And uh, wow, we got ourselves a, you know, you know. Things are changing. The Knicks are good. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I went to... Uh, I'm going to say this. I don't want my kids... This is going to come across bad. This is going to come across bad, but I just got to be honest here with you guys because it's the Verzi effect, and then I will get out of here. Um... I don't want my kids to be that, that, that smart. I want my kids to be honor students smart. I want my kids to be scholarship smart. But I don't want my kids to be 
they can build a rocket ship that can get to Mars and they know the math and science to doing that smart because those people, they're something off. Okay. Um, I was at this, this thing. I'm going to try to say this as nice as I can say this. I was at this uh, academic award show. Okay. It's at this academic award ceremony. And these kids were getting scholarships and awards. And I was there, let's just say, okay. And I got to be honest, some of the genius, genius, geniuses. Wow. I, you just wouldn't want your kid to be honestly like, and it's weird. It's like, I'm very lucky that my kids are both good students and good athletes, but I feel like if you get to a certain place of academics, you just can't be a good athlete. I mean, some of these kids look like they couldn't put one fucking foot in front of the other, but they'll build a spaceship. And I was like, all right, we got to have a balance. We got to have a balance here. Okay. Cause Elon Musk is a level of smart, but like, there's no way that Elon Musk can throw a football, play golf. Um, <laughs> how about that for a reality game show? You get the most unathletic people. Oh my God, this would be amazing. You get the most unathletic people. And they're probably going to be like brain surgeons, rocket science, you know, rocket scientists. Like you just get people that don't have an athletic bone in their body, zero coordination, and they got to play an array of games, football, <laughs> basketball. They got to hit a couple of holes of golf. They got to do tennis. They got to do soccer until there's ultimately crowned the a winner. Tell me you're not watching that. Tell me you're not cracking open a cold beer, putting your feet up and watching like the Elon Musk bowl of just unbelievable nerds trying to be, do athletics. <laughs> oh my God. I just want an Emmy. That would be insane. And by the way, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody of the people that I saw at that academic thing, like God bless them and the world needs them and they're going to invent stuff and they're going to be amazing. But it's just, I want to throw a ball with my kids. I want to play ball in the yard with my kids. I want to take my kids to sporting events and have them enjoy that. And not saying that those people wouldn't, but from what I saw, I don't think they would. And, and I, I, I want to be clear. I'm not talking just smart. My kids are smart. My son is smarter than me and my wife and my wife, my wife was an excellent student. I was obviously just distracted, but my kids are, but I, I'm talking next level shit. I'm talking scholarship to Yale for like engineering, you know, graduating high school in like 10th, 10, 10th grade or like halfway through your sophomore year with a full ride to Harvard smart. Those people, it's just another thing. And I'll be honest with you, as cool as it would be that your kids were that smart, there's something that would lack. I think anything you're really like insanely superior in, something else is going to lack. Um, but my son, my son did win a, an award for, um, he won a academic award. He, no scholarship. I mean, he's only in ninth grade, but he's a good student. So uh, shout out to all the kids that I saw do that. But uh, woof. All right. Anyway, I'm like, I don't even know what time it is. I don't even know what time we started this. I don't even know what just happened. I'm just talking some shit here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I, I don't know what just happened. Um, <laughs> but um, I hope to see you guys on the road and I hope to see you guys at a show. Please go to paulverzi.com and spread the word. Uh, and if, like I said, if you are in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area, guys, uh, 10 days away, we are 10 days away from the Gramercy. A ton of people are coming. I got celebrities saying that they're coming out. I got, um, it's just going to be dope, man. And I can't wait for you guys to see my hour, the new stuff I'm working on, the super, super new stuff I'm working on. Um, 
We're going to get a podium. Robert De Niro is going to come up and just start screaming about Trump at the end. It's going to be, um, how funny would it be if I was like, I got a surprise for you. And uh, I was like, I'm going to bring somebody out. And it was just, I just brought out, I just put two podiums and it was just Trump and De Niro just fucking screaming at each other on stage. All right, everybody. Good night. They're just still yelling. Uh, all right. I love you guys. I will be in studio next week, I believe, with the guest. Because even I'm getting tired of my ranting. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And the moral of the story is, love your families. Love your life. Um, pray if it works for you, it works for me. And um, have gratitude. I'll say all the corny shit. You think I won't? I'll say all the corny, cheesy shit you need to hear. All right, fuck these motivational speakers. Listen to the Verzi effect. Because I mean it. Those guys are like, what you need to do in your life is get rid of people that are negative and bringing you down. And everybody cheers and you're just going, really? Is that what I? Oh, thank God. You know what? Thank God I heard that. Because I was going to keep every asshole in my life uh, and let them bring me down. I think a lot of those guys are phonies. You know, a lot of those guys just say the easiest shit, but they're good performers and they can do it. You know. If you have somebody in your life telling you no, then you need to open another door until somebody tells you yes. Oh, my God. But what I will say is have gratitude, be grateful. You know, and I heard something today. I'll leave you guys with this. This is a good one. This is a good one. Uh, and I, I see, I fucking forgot it already, but it was something along the lines of, you know, a man could complain that he doesn't have shoes, but then he'll look and see a man with no feet. And it's like, yeah. So whatever you got going on right now, you know, you're pissed off at your job because you think you were overlooked. Maybe you're underpaid. Somebody getting no pay, you know, or, you know, whatever's going on in your life, you think you got it bad. If you're walking around upright and you're healthy and somewhat happy and you could go home and cook some dinner and sit down and watch your favorite show, put a smile on your fucking face. Sometimes I need to tell myself that too. Because we all get into a place where we, um, I don't know, we all get into a place where I think we um, feel not great. I know sometimes I feel not great. And I feel like, you know, what's going on or, or what am I doing? And, you know, you go through these things where I think everybody in life goes, you go through ups and downs, you get into certain feelings mentally or, or physically, or maybe physically makes you go into a shitty place mentally, but you come out the other end of it and you do the best you can. Uh, Cause that's what this thing uh, life is. And you just go on and uh Yeah. Grab yourself a, a sandwich. Go sit outside and watch the, the wind hit the trees and just be like, holy shit, man. I'm alive. This is great. I'm here. I'm fucking alive. I'm here to enjoy and experience this. And there's some people that I love that I can enjoy and experience it with. So just have a little gratitude. Be grateful. Uh, I know I'm ending this super corny, but... It really is the truth. It really is the truth. Because if you guys listen to the show regularly, you know what I went through years ago. 2016, I was in hell. I was in the worst place of my life. Uh, and things were going good. I was about to shoot a comedy special, my first. I, I was, you know, getting better in my profession. I was respected in my profession. I My kids were good. And, and, and I just fell into this thing. And it was the worst place that I've ever been. I don't know how I got out of it. I would never want to go there again. So sometimes when you feel anything like that creeping, 
once you go through it, you realize, okay, this is what the, this is what the demon is. This is what the, the that's coming. And, and I'm going to get in front of it. It happens to everybody and it's normal. The other day I was laying in bed. I was feeling shitty. I didn't want to get up. I was just, it was one of those mornings, you know, you ever just have one of those mornings where you're just like, fuck, I don't feel like, man, it's just today's not the day. I'm just going to stay here. And then I just was like, what am I doing? Get up. Get the fuck up. Put your pants on. Go grab a coffee and take care of business that you got to take care of. And you start doing shit and you get better and you get out of it. And the last thing I'll say is the last thing I'm going to say. Do it with the, just do it and be around the people that, that you love and that love you. Because that's all that matters. Um, there you go. This has been the Verzi Effect episode 616. I love you guys. I hope to see you at a show. New York, June 8th. Milwaukee, June 14th and 15th. Uh, and we got more at paulverzi.com. Check out Bone to Pick podcast. Me and Bobby Kelly, subscribe to that channel. Please hit the subscribe button on my YouTube channel as well. I'll be in studio with the guest soon. I love you guys. You guys are the best. Oh, and I'm bringing merchandise June 8th, the Verzi t-shirt. You can see it on my social media. It is sick. It says Verzi, and one of the, the, the I in Verzi at the end says Gramercy Theater with the dot on top of it. And underneath it says June 8th, 2024. And in the name Verzi is the New York City skyline. The T-shirts are absolutely sick. I'm bringing very limited with me to that, but I have that as well. And then they'll be a bit available online. Uh, check out Nocturnal Admissions streaming on Netflix. I will see you guys next week. I love you guys. Thank you guys. Be well.